so we can change our conversation. Welcome to our Thursday book launch. It is awesome. I can already tell this is going to be a really amazing night. Uh, Ma, I can see why Connie recommended you. I am already in love. Um, I do want to let everybody know that I have put the link to buy her book um, from directly from Omnidon because they're quick on uh, sending it out. If somebody did want to have it signed by you, is there a way we could contact you and you would do that? And you're muted, so let's unmute real quick. Okay. <laughs> I will write my um, email address here. Thank you. Um, okay. Perfect. And so, so while we're, um, while you're writing that in, I'm going to go ahead and just do a brief bio. Uh, if you haven't already been wowed by the title of her newest book, it's Storage Unit for the Spirit House. The cover is awesome. You can see it right behind Ma's shoulder. There, the cover. Um, and as, uh, as Connie was pointing out, um, Ma is, was the inaugural Poet Laure Laureate for El Cerrito, California from 2016 to 2018. And um, this is her second collection. It just came out two months ago and having a book come out during a pandemic is certainly a difficult thing, but we are here to celebrate you, Ma and um, to celebrate your poetry. And it's Ma Shane Wynn. I'm turning it over to you and I'm gonna make you the spotlight. Okay, yay. Um, thanks so much, Malika. That's lovely. And um, thank you for inviting me to read today. And I wanna thank Connie Post who is here tonight for introducing us and, and to all of you for joining my final reading of the year. Um, it's a pleasure to be here. And I would like to begin with a brand new poem. And it's so new that it doesn't have a title yet. So if anyone has an idea for a title, um, please put it in the chat. Um, and this is for Tom. I talk in my dreams and sometimes I laugh for a long time. T tells me that I often speak quickly and he can only hear my side of conversations. I dream about suitcases, caves, lakes, drapes. For years, I had a recurring dream of nails and shards of glass coming out of my mouth. I imagined this as shame. In other dreams, I am in flight. I flap my arms with much exertion when I wake, I'm tired. I fly upwards and hit a smooth white ceiling. I dream about losing my purse, even though I don't own one. My sister who passed once visited me in a dream. She swung around a leopard skin purse on a golden chain. She was glowing. I dream about cakes, snakes, dates, trains. My snores are delicate, so T says. I drink a glass of water while sleeping. Sometimes I hear a disembodied voice and I snap myself alert. I sleep under four heavy blankets with a pillow between my legs. I ask T before he falls asleep in seconds, where should we meet in our dreams? If I wake in anxiety, I touch his back and count backwards in Spanish. Thank you. And um, I'd like to say a little bit about Storage Unit for the Spirit House. It began as a group of poems I had been working on around the idea of containers and containment. And these were some questions I thought about while I was writing the book. Who is held and who is not held? What do we save and what do we discard? What is hidden and what is released? And I had been working on poems initially sparked by a curiosity about storage units and then continued to explore the theme of containment by writing poems about theaters, parlors, dens, and spirit houses. 
Thanks so much to Omnidon for publishing my book. Storage Unit 202. The rental faces another house. When she arrives, there are wild turkeys in the street. It begins to rain. The storage unit in El Cerrito holds pinned moths in cases, brass castanets, tin pants, a box of cork buttons. She swims laps in the thunderstorm. Sip of water. <laughs> Spirit House Six. The gnats had moved into the house on Inya Lake, zoomed through halls with pocket knives, tamarind seeds, green bananas. Family offerings of jade bracelets, cheroot cigars, deer tails. The medium danced wildly in the family room, drunk on palm wine, spinning, spinning. Orchestra of circle drums and copper bells played on the staircase, nap play. Eight children on the floorboards, leaping over uncles and cousins, shaking, shaking. Mother lit candles on the wall shrine. She spoke to the blue winged insects. They whispered back. A gnat warmed itself by the flame. Auntie walked in a dream state, hot room. Cousin slowly opened a large trunk of teak and silver strips. The gnats flew inside, one after the other, after the other. And this is called Water Space One. Tree mouth of river, sculpted ether, Incant, branch lip of sky, mother trapped in a tree. Water space two, blood hyacinth, evidence of a past event. Childhood, a burning kingdom, slap, clap. Pearled lantern, bruised hands, clung to rowboat. I also wrote um, poems around the idea of sky as well as water of being um, a container. And this is called Sky Space Two. Found round stone in gutter, felt lighter, school bus arrived, stone remained in center of palm, pink sky through window, oval cloud, felt stone in palm and recalled a father who held a mug made of gold, wallpaper in dining room, a forest to wonder, Counted people on sidewalk, girl pulling wagon under freeway overpass. Stone cold in hand, girl cold in air, gold forest. Sky Space 3, a limited edition annotated records for the researchers, referred to footnotes about the survivors, how they lived, how they moved, how they breathed. Opened door and let sky inside. Thank you. And uh, this is called Cinema. The auteur 
Pops Pain Pills, Hybrid, Saga, Biopic. Adrift in the Headroom, Nat Escape, Sirens, Deep Background. Close Up of Beehive in a Cemetery, Fugue State, Reverse Shot, Tomb Fur. Montage of lace handcuffs and cardboard boots, choking ocean. And um, this poem is for my sisters. Spirit House Five. As a child, I did not climb trees. Instead, I gathered leaves that flew to the ground. The elms were tall in the fall, the neighbor boys cruel. One left a dead kitten on the doorstep. I made homes among the leaves, safety in gold, yellow, brown. Invented a family who lived in a tree house. Green twig, the mother, broken branch, the father, two ferns, the missing sisters. Hospital, tinctures for pain, capsized vessels, hand reaches into warm body. She believes in magic and so do I, painted things, riotous hips and rib cage, a being filled with liquid, stop, stop now, please continue, over is it yet? Sleeping twins lost in desert, found in hospital, pointed things, trinkets and scepters and waterfalls in Brazil, dragon fruit scooped into bowls, owls and blue spaces in parking lots, a slithering towards planted things. Thank you. And this is called Containers. What about the spitting cobra? Why do I repeat myself? Does self storage matter? Are your teeth still here? Who do you hold? Is this a panic attack? When do the cormorants arrive? Where does guilt come from? Do you see the Calathea? What disturbs me? I witness each body through the missing bricks. Portal, intersection of vine and trapeze. The white substance poured from her mouth last night, jug tipping, spilling onto tile. I that repeats itself in conversation with other I. Sleep less, suspenders, another gift from Aunt Jenny. Neighbor plays cello. The swan floats through silk drapes in hallways. Extreme isolation exerts a person. Radio between stations. And here is a poem I wrote during these pandemic months. Slow hike mystery. Zippy lighter, milk tea, dumbbells. 
They had packed the essentials, unknowing of blizzard. Fleece suits, yes. Cough drops, no. They were unprepared for slipping stones, fanged pandas, ice fauna, ascending slope of slumber mountain, fevered breathing. They flung the dumbbells off cliffs, drank tea from leather canteens, exhaustion dreams, frost bitten limbs. Rested that night against the elms that remained. Blue flame, last flicker. And I'll get a sip of water. <laughs> And this is my second to last poem, and it's from a series I'm working on called Thought Logs. And this is Thought Log number 11. Ephemeral locations broadcast on radio. I sleep talk under an ice blanket. Emerald tadpoles, rumble strips, sacred airspace. We reconfigure our predetermined belief systems. Discover the misting spot. Share, scream. I catch the baby in the falling landscape. Our calico is shrinking. Enshrine insights for future meetups. Oak, egg, seedling, fishtail, buckskin. We pantomime in distant rooms, smays, folk, flare. Hold open space for coincidence, testing islands, succulent pathways, tan lines. Flamadiddle, Radamacue, long roll, stomped on the teleprompter. And this is my final poem from Storage Unit for the Spirit House. And this is for my longtime friends, Adrienne Della Pena and Mark Dutcher. Theater in three acts. Where are the minnows? Song of gongs in mini mall. What happens to the body after a soliloquy? Mine in mottled fur coat. When does the future arrive? Birthmark on forehead in shape of flame. Thanks so much for listening. Thank you. People, feel free to unmute. I know everybody wants to clap like I do. That was oh. amazing. Oh, everyone, thanks so much. Oh, wow. Thank you. Really oh. I'm good. Um, <laughs> chat so we can all see each other. Yay. <laughs> there we go. And I want to see everybody too. Yay. Oh, perfect. yeah, that's what I was going to say. You want to see everybody. <laughs> oh. I don't know other people's experience, but I saw Kieran had written something that I was feeling. I felt like we were being let into this secret world. It was gorgeous. And, and your poems, the language, the images are spell casting, spell binding. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Malika. And I, yes, people are writing beautiful thank you. There's tons of oh, phrases. Oh. I'll send the chat section to you, Ma. Okay, because thank you. Wanna... You're going to want to see this. Um, Karen, you wrote something that I thought was really lovely about um, Ma's writing. And I wanted to go back uh, to it. Oh, Let's sweet. see if I can find it. Wow, so many comments. <laughs> yeah, no, it was active because the lines, yes, Karen said these poems are also magical. I feel like 
Ma is speaking potions, wonderful, delicious potions. I love that. That's great. Yeah, that's perfectly said. Yeah. yeah right? I do, I do oh, believe in exactly. magic. <laughs> no, it, it feels like it. And that's how it felt. It felt, yeah. And people just wrote, I, I will send the chat section to you. Oh, of course, thank because you. you really oh, do thanks, it. everyone. Sabeel so said, oh, Allison. that was magnificent visual oh. imagery. It's just oh. gorgeous. <laughs> um, we did talk a little bit about process. Yes, yeah, Sabeel, jump in. Jump in, please. I was just saying, it's, I love the imagery. Uh, it's uh, like cinematic, beautiful. So like enveloped in a whole different world. Oh. And I can see everything so clearly with your words. So beautiful. Thank you, Sabal. Thank you. Yeah, I just, um, um, does anyone have a specific question they want to ask? So how long did it take you to put this? I'm having a shy moment. How long did it take you to put your manuscript together? How, how many years in the making was this? Um, well, to be honest, I actually wrote this um, in a relatively short period. Um, I would say a year and a half. That's really good. Yeah. I mean, some of the poems have been, you know, on my computer right. and I visited right. them and, you know, um, but yeah, I kind of just focused and, um, you know, so, you know, I started, okay. So anyways, I talked about storage units and, um, um, you know, basically Tom and I had this period where we were kind of living in transition and mm -hmm. a lot, you know, basically we just kind of got rid of everything from, you know, our for former home and we were, you know, moving around from place to place like the little gnat spirits. And, and then, you know, I started writing these poems about storage units and I started watching that storage unit um, oh, reality yeah. show, yeah. which totally depressed me. So <laughs> I do not advise to watch that show. It's so depressing, <laughs> but anyways, um, and then I started writing, you know, poems about architecture, as I mentioned at the beginning. But I felt like there was something missing in the collection, and and that that's when I started thinking about, you know, the spirit houses in Burma and Thailand and some other Southeast Asian countries. And uh, there are some Buddhists that, not all Buddhists, but there's a sect of Buddhists who believe um, that there are nat spirits. It's N A T, uh, not G N A T. Um, and these spirits are, um, well, they, every gnat spirit has a history, has a story and, um, you know, a little more, some of the stories are, uh, can be a bit on the morbid side. They, some of them died from violent deaths or, you know, and some of them are playful. Some of them are, you know, um, you know, joke, jokesters, but also some of them can wreak havoc in your life. So people will have spirit houses in the front of their house, like little houses shaped like this on stilts. And um, you make offerings inside the spirit house to appease the gnat spirits. So they won't come into your house and cause problems inside your house. But if they've already entered your house, then you need to have a spirit house inside your house. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> Anyways, it's kind of complicated. <laughs> it's a very, that's a simple explanation. Um, so then I started writing poems, the spirit house poems, and that was kind of what brought the collection together, I thought. Wow. Yeah, that's it seems very, like that's what really embraced the whole collection yeah. was the spirit houses and the numbered spirit house poems. They were lovely. Thank you. Thank and I like the whole idea of all these things that are contained in large spaces and small spaces, and then kind of containment within containment, and what escapes and what doesn't, all that was really well explored. Yeah, yeah and I just felt, and it was so, I mean, you know, I know this sounds really weird, but I finished this book before the pandemic. So it was just so strange to like, when it's, you know, we went, shelter, started shelter in place, I was like, oh my God, I'm kind of like living my book in a way, you know? I like indoors all the time. I'm like- Stuck in my own storage unit. <laughs> I'm stuck in my own storage <laughs> unit, like I am, you know? And, yeah. and it's just, and I think, you know, I've had people ask me, oh, did you write this book during the pandemic? And I'm like, no, it was, it had to be done actually last fall, uh, fall of last year. And so anyway, so that, that was kind of odd. Um, that it seems like the the theme of containment is, you know, just 
for all of us. Another level. Right. I mean, yeah. it's a prescient book in the sense of containment became, you know, such a reality and such an awareness for people. Yeah. So, Ma, that's interesting. I wondered if you had worked on some of it during the pandemic. No, no. Oh, they, wow. They, yeah. No, yeah. well, yeah. <laughs> I love so, the I, idea that you have to appease the gnats and um, and if you get in trouble, you actually have to set them up inside your house. With yeah, your house. Right. <laughs> so, so sometimes if you, you know, if you've done much travel, you know, in Southeast Asia, you'll go into restaurants and you'll see the incense being lit, you know, and if it's a spirit house, like a Buddhist spirit house, it's, you know, to just, yeah, like make sure the spirits, you know, nat spirits are appeased. And um, I did a reading recently and I was so surprised there were three people at the reading and they all had spirit houses. Oh, wow. Yeah, I was like, oh, they said, I have a spirit house. I'm like, you do? Oh my gosh. Um, Oh, Bridget. Hi, Bridget. <laughs> Yay. Hello. That was so awesome. I oh. love it. Hey, Ma, I love you. I got to drop off, though. Okay. I have a wonderful but, reading hey, comment. Hey, Thank you so much, you. Micah. I miss you. It was good to I see you. I miss you, too. Oh. Congratulations on your thank amazing you. book. Oh, thank you, Connie. See you, you later. Bye. Bye. So I wanted to make sure that people ask questions. Feel free to have this conversation. The, the, the wonderful thing about this is that, you know, Unlike in a bookstore, we we can directly like have conversation, asking questions about your process, Ma. I love the poem that you have untitled for Tom. That was amazing. It was a perfect one to enter into your world with, to be honest. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, you know, speaking of process, I, you know, I've been so busy with work and teaching. I actually hadn't been writing, and um, a friend, my friend Martha, is Martha still here? Uh, well, anyways, my friend Martha, who's one of my oldest friends, we started talking about dreams and we have a friend um, named Lael, who's like the queen of dreams. If you ever want to know anything about dreams, she is truly really? the queen of dreams. Yes. Um, so anyways, we're talking about dreams and she said, God, I just can't articulate my dreams. And I said, okay, Martha, right now, we're both going to get off the phone and we're going to write for 20 minutes and just keep writing whatever we want to write about dreams. And I'm gonna call you in 20 minutes. And that's how I wrote the, that poem. Really? From two days ago, I yeah. And, and, and it was wonderful. Thank you, Martha. I don't know if you're still here, but it just got me out of this kind of, I don't know, headspace mm. where I was feeling like I couldn't, you know, like get out of it, containment, you know? And um, so I'm feeling, well, and also today was my last day of teaching. So, <laughs> so I'm feeling- yeah very free um, and ready ready to um, do some more writing. Well, and I know we have a lot of teachers, you know, who also teach that are on this call, you know, on this Zoom call. And it, it, it must be hard because you, you were saying before we started filming that um, you had been on Zoom all day teaching and you and Tom hadn't even seen each other. And I know Jesse's a teacher and that's very hard because Zoom fatigue is, is real. Yeah. Um, and having your own creativity kind of have to sit back for a while as you navigate, you know, your job, your occupation. Yeah. I'm going to take a little break from Thank Zoom. Thank you for that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> I'm, you've earned it, especially when you, you get a break from school. But I wanted to make sure that everybody had a chance to ask any questions. And I also wanted to send out the reminder that we have open mic and I'm hoping people are willing That's to read. Um, if you are, we'll just make it simple, simple. Um, and you can let me know if you want me to pause the recording. Uh, if you're still sending the work out, um, I'll be mindful of that and I'll pause the recording. Um, but if you're okay with me recording, I'll keep on recording. And there might be a, I'm gonna check the chat real quick to make sure uh, I didn't miss anything. Tony Press had an idea, you asked about um, titles for the first poem, Ma. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. And so he said, external dream. Oh, I like that, um, Tony. Thank you. That's, that's that awesome. Oh, you're going to send, you're going to send this to me, right? Yeah, I'm going to send it all to you. So don't worry about missing Thank anything. You, external dream. Hmm. Thank no, you I, so very much. 
Yeah, thank you, everybody. Thank you so much. Um, yay, thanks, everyone. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, I do have one question. I'm oh, wondering, okay. do you have um, uh, new themes that you're sort of consciously exploring? Or are you just rolling with what arises? I'm kind of rolling, but, but I'm continuing, you know, those thought logs I've been doing. So each thought log is 16 lines. So right now I'm on number 13. So I definitely want to write 16. So I'll have 16, you know, 16 line thought logs. Um, but the way I started that was over the summer, I was taking um, a chronic pain workshop and uh, wait, was it, or was it my life coach? I don't remember anyways. So, but the homework was that I had to write down every single thought that I had. And I was like, whoa, I love this homework. So I just started writing down each thought as it came in my mind. And I was like, I can't believe my thoughts are just jumping around so much. And I'm like, that could be a poem. And so that's, how, <laughs> so that, so my homework, my homework for my um, life coach um, turned into my um, uh, thought log poems. So then, you know, now I was like, well, maybe because I have a very active dream life <laughs> um, and I have really weird dreams every single night and Tom, asked me in the morning, um, Tom's probably embarrassed. Um, Tom asked me every morning, what did you dream about? And I'm like, oh, I dreamt that I was um, living in a basement in Buenos Aires with performance artists. And the only way that I was able to um, get food, um, breakfast, lunch, or dinner was that I had to do a performance art piece. And like, we're just going on and on and on. And he's like, oh my gosh. <laughs> so anyways, I'm kind of thinking that I want to start keeping dream logs. And so, you know, the one I just wrote um, for tonight, <laughs> today, might be a new series. Yeah, Elizabeth just wrote, and this is very true, what a gift weird dreams every night. What a gift for <laughs> you and for us as readers. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. <laughs> and I, I really like the idea of um, paying attention to every thought. Yeah, I, you know, I really it. recommend this for everybody. That's it's awesome. so interesting to just write down. I mean, it is like free writing, but it's a little different. Like I, the way it, well, I, it's on the screen, but the way I have it on the page is every line is separate from each other. So it's like these thoughts with space in between each line. Does that make sense? Um, and I don't know, it's yeah. just been, I've really enjoyed writing them and they've kind of, they've actually sort of flowed for me. <laughs> but it makes me curious now. And, and I was thinking, I'm, I'm really grateful you shared that because now I, I, I wonder, you know, about how thoughts move in the brain, you know, how we jump from one topic to the next. You know, that's awesome. Actually, oh, go um, ahead. Does anybody have a, Bridget wanted to say, yeah, that is, oh, Gracia said that is key, enjoying writing your thoughts, yeah. And you've inspired a couple people now because they're saying, I'm going to keep a dream log. Okay. Yay. Yeah. I, you know, I have to say, I'm going to say, awesome. you're inspiring people. Oh, hooray. Let's all share. And there's our more logs. title suggestions. More. Oh, good. Oh, my gosh. Wow. I, I'm not a, uh, I'm an illustrator. So if I shared my thought log, it would be a lot of scribbles right now. Oh, but they could be drawings. They definitely Thought drawings. Oh, That's absolutely amazing! Yeah. yeah, I'm gonna log off. Thank you so yeah, much. Oh, like Russia, thank you so yeah. much. Really enjoyed Love seeing you, everybody. Russia. All right, bye. Uh, great to see you. I see you. <laughs> so I have, I have two people that said they would read. Um, Christy did, and then uh, Tony, if you're still here. Yeah, said everyone's he a poet too. here. <laughs> so I will head. Let's say we yeah, probably yeah, should just have everybody just read when they just go to one block to the next. Bridget, you have oh, a Elizabeth, poem? Elizabeth will read too. That's fantastic. Annabelle can come up with one on the spot. I'll read <laughs> one. Sure. And so can Carol and Jane. <laughs> okay. Car I'll go to Carol. So okay. I will go first to Christy and then we'll oh, just was, work our I way around. And I, Carol's you. just, <laughs> unless you want to. 
guest. And we're a, a great audience here. We'll be excited, yeah. you know, to hear you. Okay, I should be heading towards Christy. Okay, and can you pause for me because I sent this out. Yes, ma'am. Of the lair. It was the morgue of the poor. It was the tooth on the wire. It was the bite of the scythe. It was the spit on the mic and the fever in spike. It was the dirt and the dust and the hoist of a fist. It was the moist and the crisp and the trumpet of judgment. It was the rabid encampment, the exuberant statement, the scurry, the flurry, and the dissonant worry. It was the hour of our power, or was it? Wow, awesome. I love the language in that, in that poem, and it was really lovely to hear it read aloud because it's definitely a poem that wants to speak. It wants to be heard. That's lovely. Thank you. I love that, Liz, and I love all the sounds and wonderful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> This, this is an amazing push poet. away compliment. <laughs> She's that awesome. was awesome. Thank you for reading. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Ah, that's fantastic. Um, Jesse, do you have a poem that you want to read? And so, is it Sabeel or Sabelle? Thank you. Sorry. It's Sabelle. Yes. Thank you. Sabelle. And then I'll go to you, Jesse. So it's all yours. We'd love to hear you, Sabelle. Oh, we must have a baby nearby. <laughs> Unmute first. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thank you. Okay, let's see. What can I read quickly? Because my daughter might be crying very soon. Let's see. The womb of night that calms me to divine reverie, the color of soft sand in the Caribbean, the utopian mirage that grafts me through centuries of existence, skin and muscle that signify true human beauty. When I kiss you, it's with the whole of me, like a shadow covering the city. Thank you, everybody. Oh, that's gorgeous. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you so much, Sabelle. Sabelle's amazing. <laughs> what, and, and also, I have to say, you have such a lovely voice. You could, that was beautiful, just a lovely voice. Like, I appreciate that very much. Thank Your you. child's going to love being read to. That's awesome. My God. You can keep reading if you want. That's and Sabelle is also a, an amazing dancer. So she dances for her daughter. Oh my gosh. That's, that's amazing. Thank you. I love to dance. I love ballet um, and kind of combining it with poetry. I think Sharon Coleman does dan uh, dances. But yes, I love ballet and poetry, modern dance, kind of yeah. combining together thank you thank you mom that's fantastic and liz, and liz writes about dance <laughs> and liz does liz, I do. Know Sabelle. <laughs> that's yes. awesome. we should make projects and we should say, say you realize this is a collaboration that needs to happen right well, yes well i noticed that allison noted that line from your poem about the um lace handcuffs and the cardboard shoes and i think somebody needs to make some lace handcuffs and some cardboard oh. shoes and then right? use them in a dance performance i'm just saying oh my God. <laughs> that's actually I that. that's i love that idea because <laughs> there's no way you ever get the lace handcuffs and the cardboard shoes ever out of your mind you just don't yeah. it, it's there <laughs> Thank you for that, Ma. Years from now, I will have that image, and <laughs> I love it, though. Uh, oh, show us the baby, Sabell. Oh yeah, come on, Mirabelle. Yay! Oh, that's a princess. oh my gosh, <laughs> what a sweetheart! Thank you, hey, beauty. Aw, <laughs> just Hello. gorgeous. And look at all that hair. My kids were bald for the first three years of their life. Oh well. Aww. Thank you. It's great okay, to meet. Head, head colored hair. Jesse, <laughs> would you like to read with uh, tonight? We would. I would love to hear you read. Yay! Uh, uh, sure. Okay. <clears throat> Prince Albert. I pee sitting down sometimes when my Prince Albert goes missing. A penis without a Prince Albert is just a penis with two pee holes. Normally I can twist my dick clockwise and seal the opening at the base of the foreskin using gravity. 
and the ring as enough obstruction to allow urine to flow through its natural course and to its destination, toilet. Without it, no matter which way I twist it, I get leakage and splash on my jeans and sleeves from the first hole. In my late teens, the piercing allowed me to expose myself without fear of reprisals. I wasn't flashing the young ladies. I was showing them a shiny thing attached to the end of my cock as an icebreaker, not an assault, not a direct assault, but periphery degradation, an ancillary attack to be forgotten until a generation later, my name gains recognition and my philanthropy gains traction. My face next to a headline, cheeks plumper, hair grayer, eyes softer, but they won't be mistaken. They'll remember, they'll all remember and demand justice with hashtags and an effective cyber campaign calling for my end, fitting revenge for perverts who didn't anticipate the advent of social media. I'll respond to them. I was young. I was dumb. I'm sorry. My father wasn't around. But now I have a wife, three cats, and when I pee, I pee sitting down. Damn, Jesse. Can you hold up the cover of your book, Jesse? Since you were, yeah, since you were reading from it, will you hold? Thank you. Excellent book. I have a copy of it and uh, Jesse always delivers. Thank you. That was intense. Oh boy. I love open mic for this reason because the range of, yeah, exactly. The range of voices and topics is, is so awesome. It always blows me away. And for some reason, this Thursday has brought particularly amazing poets. Um, I want to make sure, yeah, great title. This was said, great title, Jesse, Health Carefully. Yep. Jesse and his wife made hundreds of masks, sewed hundreds of masks. He learned how to sew to do that. And his wife is in the healthcare profession. Yep. Thanks for sharing, Jesse. Um, it, does anyone else want to read? I want to make sure that I didn't miss somebody. Because uh, some, yeah, Karen, there we go. I'll come to you next. Can you unmute me, Malika? I'm reading some fresh ink tonight. You, oh, you want me to pause it? Yeah, please. Awesome. Thank you. I've been enjoying that. And the musicality with that was lovely. Thanks. That was awesome. I'm moving back to gallery view. <laughs> so, yeah. I love yeah. the rhythm. That was very musical. Yeah. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, the, the rhythm was just like rocking. It was lovely. Thank you, and I hope my cat wasn't too distracting. She no, was I, I was watching the cat, cat fluffy tail passing yeah. by. Was there a tail going behind my head? Because she was literally climbing on my back. It was just behind you moving oh. right, I, and I kept looking at it going, I wonder what that cat's up to, because, you know. Yeah, she's climbing my back. She's yeah. she's the Zoom cat. I don't know what, I don't know why. She loves it. Because she's a cat, and she can't, and I you know. won't let it happen. Yeah, she can't help herself. She's fascinating. <laughs> Um, does anyone else want to read James or Carol or Bridget? Who have we missed? Or Annabelle? Yeah. Annabelle um, is an amazing photographer and she took the photo. Well, she's taken many photos of me, <laughs> but she took the photo in my book. You oh, see? that's awesome. Yay. Hey. Thank you, Annabelle. Ma, Ma is my muse. <laughs> I can see I can see why yes I, I think she's inspired a lot of people tonight so uh, Annabelle I can see why that's amazing love you Annabelle love you, Ma. <laughs> hi Carol I can hi, ask Carol to un uh, unmute so she can jump in well we have a few more minutes so I think that we can just stay in company of one another and if a question arises and Carol you're unmuted so if you want to talk please do and I, can I just do a shout out for my friend, Bridget? Yes. Um, Bridget um, and I have known each other for eight years. Bridget, I can't remember. But Bridget has a new book out. 
Um, I don't have it right in front of me, but Bridget, do you have it handy? No. <laughs> <laughs> Bridget, you're not going to be the model for PR here. I know Vanessa Y would be so mad at me. Do you want to say a few? Do you want to say a few words about it? It just came sure, out. Sure, sure. Uh, so um, I have a book that came out in August called "She Votes: How U.S. Women Won Suffrage and What Happened Next." Much more fun than that sounds. Um, it is a history of women's rights in the United States, illustrated by a hundred women artists for the 100 year anniversary of ratification of the 19th amendment. And it is uh, fun to read and oh, some, yeah. some unknown stories and intersectional stories about women's you history. Know, honestly, Bridget, I would love to do a book launch for you. We mainly do poetry, but this <laughs> oh, is a huge great. one for me. I would oh. love that. Do you I know, uh, have you heard the wonderful. name of course? Victoria Woodhull, right? Of course. Victoria Woodhull does not figure in my book only because there are so many stories of over 200 years, but of course, amazing, amazing. Because I have, figure. she's a relative of mine and I have a chair oh, wow. that I inherited. Oh, uh, yeah. That's a poem in itself. <laughs> wow. Yeah, my grandmother. And um, amazing. I, uh, my book has a poem about her because I used to sit in that chair for I inspiration. Oh my God, I love that. Um, uh, Mary Gabriel, oh, who yeah. wrote an entire biography of Victoria Woodhull, uh, blurbed my book. Really? Okay, so oh. was it the one Satan Says or? Um, I can't, it's, it's one of those Satan books says. that has a very long subtitle, which I can't remember. She's best known now for writing Ninth Street Women, uh, which is about okay. the abstract expressionists. Yeah, um, yeah. I probably have that. It's probably the one that talks about the spiritual knocking. It's like a really long title. Subtitle it's a very underneath. long title. I can't yeah. even remember <laughs> the title. That's awesome. But no, I would definitely. So Bridget, it's just Malika Albrecht at gmail.com. Okay, I'll get and your, we'll pick I'll a get your Because this is a topic I'm obsessed with. Oh, oh fantastic. And I would love Great. to hear the history, more history. So. I mean, there's so Thank many amazing stories, so yeah. many, and so oh, many and untold Bridget, stories. Um, and so for people who love art, um, Bridget also wrote a book called Broad Strokes, and it's all about women artists um, and also <laughs> incredible. Um, it's on my magic bookshelf. Oh, I know. I saw in the in date book. I was like, there it is. <laughs> That's awesome. See, and I, I have to tell you, I love that about you, Ma, and about Connie that you make sure that it's inclusive and that you celebrate other writers, other people. It, I love that. I think that's so wow. important in particularly now that we do what we can for our fellow, fellow humans. I mean, that, for us really in a, in a large sense of that interdependence, right. it's important. Yeah. So thank okay. you for doing that. Mom. Welcome. And, and Bridget, pleasure to meet you. Me. I look forward to celebrating with you. Yeah, and I want to say Liz, since I'm doing shout outs, Liz also has a new chat book out and it's marvelous in the other room, but um, um, I highly recommend it. It's called Relic and it's Thank beautiful. Liz. So, so we, can, we can celebrate that too. Hey, well, I just on. want to say I'm also a Victoria Woodhull fan. I mean, I read this a biography called Other Powers about her many years ago, but it really stayed with me. But she was such an amazing character. So that's really Oh, cool. come on now. Amazing. Yes. And, amazing. And, and, and Bridget, I've got to read your book too. <laughs> I'm upset. You know, I mean, obviously, and, and I didn't hear about her until I was a teenager because my, my grandmother said, well, that side of the family. <laughs> oh, I'm sure yeah. she was scandalous. Oh, yes. And, and her and sister still, Penny, oh my goodness, they were quite, they were quite uh, free, free loving people. They were out there. Yes. Yeah. yes, I love Tennessee. And actually Tennessee has started to get more people researching her because she was really undervalued because Victoria kind of overshadowed. But yeah, Have definitely you, once I had that in my picture, I was like, okay, this makes sense. Uh, a lot of stuff. A lot of <laughs> Have stuff. you written so about I have a, Malika? Her? Have you written about her? I have just that one poem. You know, uh -huh. it's really strange. Every once in a while, I think it, I love reading about her. I love thinking about her. I love sitting in that chair. Actually, I'll read that one poem. I'd, I'd love to hear the poem. I'd love uh, to hear it. Okay. Um, 
this is from the Stumblefields, and it's just called Victoria Woodhall Learns to Speak. One, how odd that you prefer spirits talking over a woman alone on a stage. So be it. I will tell you, I am a flute the wind whispers through. Listen how softly I speak, still the white rose pinned to my dress trembles. My sister Tennessee dressed as a man has forgotten what lambs wear. I've made room in my dark skirt for the voice that says, a woman's legs don't part at your command. Do not, however, receive this as coming from me. Two, sitting in Victoria's carved oak chair that I inherited, I listen to ghosts who are always talking I type as one speaks, but I will tell you, this comes directly from me. Oh, I love that one. Yay. Thank you. Oh, I love fantastic. That. Thank wow. you. Wow. Beautiful. Thank it you. was intense that that was the thing she had to say, though, that she was yeah. channeling spirits yeah. rather than speaking as a woman. So they were table knockers. <laughs> I got a long history of shasterism in my family. <laughs> All right, guys. <laughs> Be well. well the table oh, it was Bye. fabulous. Thank, Thank you. So Thank you. Much. So good to Thank see you. you. Thank this you. was Thank just such a lovely group of people. So Thank you, lovely. Elizabeth, Bridget. We celebrate Yay. soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you, Jesse. Wow. Thank you, Karen. Thanks, Adele. Mel, thank you for showing the baby. Bye, Jesse. Oh, Megan. Oh, Megan was here. Oh, my God. Hi, Megan. <laughs> um bye everybody thank you malika thanks my so pleasure much. it's so awesome. lovely and thank you for sending me the chat too <laughs> i will gladly do that and the video oh, i'll have that for you. you be well oh, thanks guys you too.